Hello and welcome to lecture number 8 in the course Advanced Robotics. In the last class, I had discussed about the inverse kinematic solution of the 3 degree of freedom uh, planar manipulator. Then we had looked at the inverse kinematics of the 6 degree of freedom Puma robotic arm. So today I will continue my discussion of the uh, 6 degree of freedom uh, Puma robotic arm. And then we'll try and solve a few numerical problems uh, for the uh, three, 3 degree of freedom planar arm and also this Kara manipulator. So mainly I had asked a question in the last class that uh, the way the Puma manipulator inverse kinematics was systematically solved is that we multiplied the transformation matrices in a particular sequence. And why did we do that? Okay. And uh, when we did that, we found that in the matrix uh, 1 to 6, the transformation matrix which takes the relation between, which gives the relation between frame 1 and frame 6, we found that the PY term only contains uh, D3. Okay. And there is no sign and cause there. So why did that happen? That is something that we'll try and answer uh, today and then we'll look at a few numerical problems. Okay, so today we'll talk about or uh, continue our discussion about the inverse kinematics problem. And uh, in the last class I talked about the Puma robotic arm inverse kinematics. So today let's continue from there and uh, solve a few numerical examples. So in the Puma arm, the first thing that we uh, did was we assigned our DH parameters from the DH, par DH parameter table we basically found the various uh, transformation matrices that relates one frame to the previous frame. And then uh, we basically wrote down our DH table which is given by uh, this table. So this was the DH table for the Puma robot and based on which we made our transformation matrices which relates one frame to the other frame. And then we got our six transformation matrices. So this one relates frame one to frame zero, this two to one, three to two, four to three like that. Okay, And then uh, these are the remaining uh, two. So what we saw is that after finding the transformation matrices, if you want to find the relationship between the, the last frame, the sixth frame and the zero frame, we multiply all the matrices together, right? So zero to one into one to two like that till the last one, which is five to six, okay? But we multiplied in a particular sequence, okay? And what we saw uh, for the Puma robot is that the sequence in which we multiplied is that I first multiplied uh, these two matrices in, the, in this way, then I multiplied this, then I multiplied this two. Okay, so this was my first, then second, then third. So basically what we did, we got one to six. Okay, now if you do that, what we did see is that, you know, let's just go back and see. So first the way we multiplied is we multiplied uh, uh, four, four, five, five, six. Then we multiplied three, six, and we got transformation three to six. Okay. Then I multiplied one to three, and then multiplied one to three into uh, 4 to 6. Then I multiplied my t1 to 3 into t4 to 6. 4 to 6, which is going to give me 1 to 6. Now we did it that way because we wanted to remove the theta 1. Okay. And if I do it that way, what happens is that you get this term in the matrix t1 to 6, you get this term py, which is equal to d3. And that is where we started our solution procedure from. Because all the other terms you can see, they contain uh, sine and cos terms. This is the only term which does not contain sine and cos. So we started our solving the problem from here, solving the inverse kinematics equation from here. And the question that comes up now is that we were able to solve because this term did not have a sine and a cos. So if you see further, the moment you multiply 1 to 6, that means you multiply that 0 to 1 into 5 to 6, what happens is this py starts having all kinds of sine and cos terms. And in this uh, situation, you cannot solve this system of equations, okay? Now, uh, so it's very important for us to understand that uh, why did it happen that this particular term did not contain a sine and a cos? So the solution procedure, let me go through uh, at least the first part very quickly. So what we did in this matrix is essentially I want to remove the variable theta 1. So if I want to remove the variable theta 1, what I do is I multiply this with the uh, we multiply this with the 0 to 1 inverse, which is given here. Okay. So when I do that, what happens is this term Py has only D3. So basically I take the 2 and 4 elements. So this is 2 into 4 elements and I get one equation. And this is a variable, uh, this is an equation with a variable theta 1. And then I solve for theta 1 and proceed in that order. So the question is, why is it that uh, this term did not contain, Py did not contain sine and cos? Now that's, we, we need to go back a little bit and look at the TH parameter table again. Okay. Now 
this is the DH parameter table that came up for the Puma robot. Now let's go back to the the uh, frame assignments and try and uh, make sense out of it. So the zero frame and the first frame are here at that point. Okay. The second uh, zero one is here. The second is also here. Okay. So zero one two origins are the same. The third frame is here, which means that uh, this origin has moved like this and it has moved like that by a distance here it is moved by d3 and here it is moved by a2 so this is my a2 then after it has reached that point which is here it has moved up like this by distance d3 and then it has gone this side by a distance d4 okay so it is here now so this is my origin 4 now if you see origin 4 origin 5 and origin 6 they are at the same point okay now this is saying that so this is basically saying that beyond this origin beyond this origin there is no more change of a and d so a and d are equal to zero after this which basically means that origins of four five six are at same point okay so because the origins are the same point a is equal to d is equal to zero for uh, the frames after that so which means that whatever change in a or d that happens it happens only till here not beyond this okay. and that is precisely the reason why uh, this uh, py did not contain a sign and a cos when we multiply t1 to 6 okay so the condition for a solution to exist for a closed form solution to exist is that uh, your uh, the last three axes have to intersect so this is a very very important uh, result so important result of what we call the piper solution or the condition or necessary condition is that the last three axes intersect at a point and if the last three axes do not intersect at a point the system of equations are unsolvable you will not be able to solve them so this is very very important from the manipulator design point of view so whenever we are designing a manipulator we have to ensure that the last three axes at the wrist they intersect at a point at, at wrist so in the human arm in the human arm the last three axes do not intersect and hence so human arm so human arm has seven degree of freedom and last three axes do not intersect and this means that no closed form solution Okay. This is a very, very important result, which we also talk about in terms of the Piper's result, that the last three axes have to intersect. Otherwise, what will happen is uh, you will not be able to solve the system of equations. Okay. And uh, in, the, in the case of the human arm, the last three axes do not intersect. We have seven degrees of freedom. The last three axes do not intersect, and we do not have a closed form solution. Okay. Now, uh, this is just to tell us about the... Now, let us uh, look at the uh, a few numerical problems so let's solve a few numerical examples of uh, let's say forward and forward kinematics and inverse kinematics this forward kinematics problem i had al already solved uh, but i'll just revise it so that we can see the relation between forward kinematics inverse kinematics okay now something to be uh, to note is that we are using sine and cos terms so there is a question of how many decimal places that we are using okay because these are approximate uh, values okay so how many uh, decimal places we are using would matter when you get your solution so let's look at first the forward kinematics this will become clear as we go along so forward kinematics let us look at this uh, forward kinematics of a three link manipulator okay we know that I have written this down many many times so this is my z0 z1 this is x0 this is x1 this is z2 this is z3 this is x2 and this is x3 so the coordinate of the point there is uh, uh, is xy okay now suppose we are given 
uh, the inverse uh, the forward kinematic solution i'm doing first example is uh, forward kinematics example one so i'm giving theta one is equal to theta two is equal to 30 degrees okay l1 is equal to l2 is equal to one unit so this is uh, l1 and that's l2 so we can write the dh parameter table and then write all the transmission matrices and get x is equal to l1 cos 1 plus l2 cos 1 2 this i have done before also i'm just repeating it quickly to make the connection l2 sine 1 2 so as theta 1 is equal to theta 2 is equal to 30 degrees i can simply put the values x is equal to l1 cos 30 plus l2 cos 30 okay and l1 l2 is equal to 1 so i'll get 1.36 okay y is equal to l1 sine 30 plus l2 sine 30 i'll get again 1.36 okay so this is my forward kinematics now let me with the same let me do the uh, let's do example 2 inverse kinematics kinematics for x y equal to uh, 1.36 and 1.36 okay and let's say the total angle phi uh, the total angle phi is equal to uh, some other value okay let's uh, let's take some other value so what i'm doing i'm doing the inverse kinematics or oh, let me just do the xy phi you can so phi is equal to let's say 90 degrees okay so phi is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 so here theta 3 is also there so theta 3 is also equal to 30 degrees okay what is phi equal to phi is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 okay now in the inverse kinematics problem i am giving you that x y is equal to 1.36 and uh, 1.36 and phi is equal to 90 degrees okay so you find out what is phi phi is this final angle here that is phi okay that is my final angle that is phi so what is uh, what we are supposed to find out so the question is find theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 Okay, what are these corresponding angles by using inverse kinematics so the same problem forward kinematics have done now do the inverse kinematics where you are given x y as 1.36 1.36 and phi is 90 so you should be able to get back these values theta 1 equal to 30 theta 2 equal to 30 theta 3 equal to 30 okay l1 l2 is given uh, l1 is equal to l2 is equal to 1 unit that's given okay let's look at the problem now and try and solve it so this is the same manipulator that we were just talking about okay so the coordinate of this point so the coordinate of this point the frame 3 now let me draw the frames so let me just draw the frames if i draw the frames then uh, this is z0 z1 this is z2 this is z3 okay this is x0 x1 x2 and x3 okay so now the coordinate of that point is given as so this is given as 1.36 1.36 there are more numbers 1.3666 but i'm just approximating with two decimal places 1.36 1.36 so this is my x that's my y okay now what about uh, so i'm given that what about the final angle phi the final angle phi is given as 90 degrees okay or oh, let's not call it 90 degrees let's call it 110 110 degrees okay just uh, to change it to 110 110 degrees final angle okay now uh, what would be the desired matrix so i'm going to multiply t0 to 3 and i'm going to get cos 1 2 3 minus sine 1 2 3 this is sine 1 2 3 cos 1 2 3 that is 0 0 1 this is 0 0 this is 0 0 0 and this is l1 uh, cos 1 plus l2 cos 1 2 this is l1 sine 1 plus l2 sine 1 2 this is a 0 that is 1 okay this is what i have got now from the dh parameter table now what i need is i need the desired position orientation of the end effector so the desired position orientation of the end effector so t desired desired or given is equal to 
let's say we are given x y and uh, z values so what is given is the values here 1.36 1.36 that is 0 this is 0 0 0 that is 1 now cos 110 is equal to minus 0 0.34 sine and sine 110 is equal to 0 0.93 9 okay if i'm using only two decimal places let me just say 9.93 here it's equal to 0 0.93 that is equal to minus 0 0.34 this is 0 0 and that is 0 0 1 okay so we have got our uh, this is what is desired what is given now i need to uh, solve so i need to solve now Now we have said that we write our equations L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1 2 is equal to 1.36 L1 sin 1 plus L2 sin 1 2 is equal to 1.36 now square and add I solved it in the last class please have a look at the solution so the solution essentially is for theta 2 uh, cos 2 comes out to be x squared plus y squared please look at the last class where I actually squared added and I uh, and I solved it step by step cos 2 is equal to x squared plus y squared minus l1 squared minus so this is my l2 squared okay and this is equal to twice and the denominator is twice l1 l2 okay so this is equal to one point uh, x and y are given so 1.36 squared plus 1.36 squared minus 1 minus 1 divided by twice into 1 into 1 okay so this is what we are getting so cos 2 uh, will be equal to when i simplify this i get cos 2 is equal to 0 0.849 okay now we are not supposed to find cos inverse from here please remember so what do we have to do we have to find sine both the val positive values of sine and cos so i do uh, sine 2 is equal to 1 minus cos 2 squared which is equal to root over 1 minus 0. 849 squared which is equal to 0 0.529 okay then what do we do we use theta 2 is equal to the function a tan 2 which basically means positive sine 2 and cos 2 okay which is equal to a tan 2 uh, sine 2 is equal to 0 0.529 and uh, cos 2 is 0 0.849 okay so this means a tan 2 theta 2 is equal to a tan 2 okay 0 0.5529 divided by 0 0.849 and which is equal to 0. Point, so which is equal to a tan 2 0. 0.6 six two three and so theta two when i take the tan inverse is equal to 31 degrees okay so please note that we did not get exactly 31 so please note that in when i solved if you remember that when i solved the forward kinematics i said theta one is 30 and theta two is 30 okay and by using l1 cos theta one plus l2 cos theta one plus theta two i got this is 1.36 actually there are more digits there okay so the actual value of this will be uh, cos 30 plus cos 60 which is equal to 1.366 so it is 1.366 okay so if i had taken one more decimal place okay up to third decimal place i would get a better answer okay, but because i took only two decimal places uh, approximation is coming this is what i mean by the approximation coming and i took only two decimal places okay so now we see that when we use only two decimal places we get it is 31 degrees okay 31 point something will come again so this is almost 30 so it, theta 2 is coming as 31 degrees so that's why it's very important to take the maximum number of decimal places uh, in order because you're dealing with sine and cos now now uh, once you've got theta 2 you need to find theta 1 now next is find theta 1 okay so how do you find theta 1 we have seen that we use the geometric method which is the simplest okay so 
this is my xy and this is my theta 1 this is my theta 2 and the corresponding angles are alpha and beta so we know the tan alpha so tan alpha is equal to uh, y by x and y by x is 1.36 1.36 so which is equal to 1.36 divided by 1.36 which is equal to 1 so tan alpha is 1 tan beta tan beta is uh, okay so this is my tan beta l this is l1 this is l2 okay so tan beta is equal to uh, l1 sine theta so l1 uh, sine 2 divided by l1 plus oh sorry it is not l1 it is l2 L2 sine 2 divided by L1. So sorry, this is L1. This is L1. That is L2. So this is equal to L2 sine 2. So this is L2 sine 2 divided by L1 plus L1 plus L2 cos 2. And we just found that theta 2 was equal to 31 degrees. So tan beta I write it as so tan beta is equal to l we have seen we are given that l1 is equal to l2 is equal to one unit so this is simply sine 31 and here it is uh, 1 plus cos 31 which is equal to 0 0.51 divided by 1.857 okay, which is which comes out to be 0 0.274 that's just a question of putting in the values. Then we know that theta 1 is equal to, so theta 1 is equal to a tan, a tan 2, tan alpha, tan alpha minus tan beta, okay, divided by 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. So which when I put in the values, I get theta 1 is equal to a tan 2. So 1 minus 0 0.274 divided by 1 plus 0 0.274. Okay. And uh, which is equal to a tan 2.0.569. So theta 1 comes out to become equal to 29.7 degrees again because of this approximation which is coming inside because of two decimal places you see it is not exact it should have been 30 exactly because we started off in the uh, taking the solution as uh, from the forward kinematics we use 30 30 and got 1.36 but again because of this two digit approximation we are doing this is coming as uh, not exactly this 30 but it's coming almost near 30 okay so i've got theta 1 to be 29.7 degrees and I've got theta 2 to be 31 degrees. Okay, now, uh, so this gives you an example of how to do the inverse kinematics, uh, the forward kinematics and the inverse kinematics. I tried to correlate both of this so you understand that uh, from forward kinematics, I got the coordinates and then I put the coordinates in inverse kinematics and then did the inverse kinematics and got back an approximate, an approximate close answer. Okay, so I should have uh, theoretically done at least four or five decimal places. Then I would have got a nearly exact answer. Okay, so now we see that what were we given? We were given this is the desired and I have found theta 1 is equal to 29.7 degrees and theta 2 to be equal to 31 degrees. Now what about, uh, so what is phi now? So what is phi? And the total phi is given as 110. Right? So we can take any one of this. I can take uh, this term. Okay, let me take this term and equate it with the left hand side and right hand side okay so what we can do is or i can take you can take any term okay so here let me take uh, this term and equate with this term so cos 1 2 3 is equal to minus 0 0.34 therefore 1 2 3 is equal to inverse uh, inverse cos of minus 0 0.34 which is equal to 100 so let me write theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 so this sorry let me write it clearly so theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to 
so you are given cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to minus 0 0.34 so I take inverse cos cos inverse uh, will give me theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to 109.8 degrees okay again you see that there is a slight approximation there coming inside we said 110 but this is coming 109.8 again because of that uh, two decimal places problem okay so uh, we get cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 so let me go here so theta uh, cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to minus 0 0.34 taking cos inverse of minus 0 0.34 is equal to 109.87 okay that's how i got it okay now uh so theta 1 we have, we now have theta 1 was equal to how much theta 1 was equal to 20 uh, theta 1 was how much uh, 20 29.7 so this was 29.7 theta 2 was 31 plus theta 3 is equal to 109.87 so theta 3 is equal to how much it's 109.87 minus 29 uh, 29.7 plus 31 60.7 okay, which is therefore theta 3 is equal to 109.87 minus 60.7 which is equal to 49.17 okay 49.17 okay so theta 1 is equal to 49.17 okay so this basically shows you that uh, how to find given x y and phi uh, obtain theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 using inverse kinematics okay inverse kinematic solution okay now let's move on to uh, another manipulator and do the inverse kinematics this is a problem which is basically just to explain how forward inverse kinematics is done now let's move on to another manipulator which is the uh, the scala robot Okay, so let's uh, just try and solve the inverse kinematics of the scalar robot and try to understand. Okay, so let's try and solve the inverse kinematics of the scalar robot. Let me just draw the scalar robot. I had solved it in one of the earlier classes. Revise this very quickly. So, uh, this is my scalar robot which has 4 degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is my the basic structure of the SCARA. So S C A R A SCARA robot which has four degrees of freedom, four DOF. It has three revolute joints, one prismatic joint. Okay. Now let us uh, write down the various axes. Let me take the first axis is here. This is Z0, Z1. This is the second axis. Z2, Z3 is fitted onto the third link which is there, so that's my Z3 and Z4 is here. Okay, now uh, this is my X0, X1, this is X2, this is X3 and this one is X4. Okay, this link length is L1, this link length is L2 and there is a distance from here to here, let us say that is L4. and uh, this is l4 and this distance this is a prismatic joint so it is a variable d3 okay that is my variable d3 so d3 can move up and down till here right till here so uh, let me put the arrow lower down so it can go up and down till here and that's my d3 so from the end of d3 motion to the x the fourth axis is that is the length l4 okay so the first thing that we need to do is uh, the way I have put my axis, it basically shows that I'm neglecting these link lengths, okay? I'm neglecting those lengths. You can actually add them, it doesn't matter. So let's write our dh parameter table. It's a alpha d and theta. I had done this uh, in detail in one of the earlier classes. Please have a look at that. So zero and the first frame is the same. 
so it will be 0 0 0 theta 1 then the second uh, the frame is shifted by a length l1 okay so there is a length of l1 uh, there is a shift in the x direction so it is l1 0 0 theta 2 then l2 the third frame is at a distance of l2 from the frame 2 0 now something to note is that there is a dis the variable here is t3 which is the prismatic joint and there is no rotating axis there now the fourth axis is rot the z is pointing downwards z3 is pointing upwards so there is a zero and there is a 180 degree shift okay it is like the z3 axis is rotated by 180 degrees and it becomes a z4 axis is rotated by 180 about the x3 okay this is my l4 the distance between the x-axis when d3 changes and this is my theta 4 okay so now let's write down from the dh parameter table i can use the generalized matrix please look at the generalized matrix i minus 1 to i okay. so i take each of these rows put it into the generalized matrix and what we get is t 0 to 1 which is equal to cos 1 si minus sine 1 sine 1 cos 1 0 0 1 0 0 this is uh, 0 0 0 this is 0 0 0 1 okay, this is the first uh, transformation matrix now i have to multiply this with the second transformation matrix so let i'm trying to find 0 to 4 which is equal to t 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 so first multiply this two then i multiply that one then i multiply that one okay so i'm writing it together so that we understand the matrix multiplication becomes easier the second one is t0 uh, 1 to 2 what is that we have an l1 and we have a theta 2 so it is cos 2 minus sine 2 sine 2 cos 2 uh, 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 l1 0 0 1 now when i multiply these two t 0 to 2 what do we get we get the matrix cos 1 2 you can multiply it out and see row into columns minus sine 1 2 sine 1 2 cos 1 2 0 0 l1 cos 1 and l1 sine 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0, 0 1 okay now to this 0 to 2 i basically multiply a 2 to 3 so my matrix 2 to 3 I hope you understand what I'm doing. 2 to 3 I'm writing here. Okay, so I'm writing them together so you can multiply easily. So take the third row, put it in the generalized matrix and what we get is there is only a prismatic joint. So there cannot be any change in the angle. There is only change in the uh, distance. This is equal to L2, 0, 1, 0. This is 0, 0, 0, 1. This is D3 and that is 0, 0, 0 and 1. This indicating that this part uh, here is an identity matrix which means there is no change in the angle so the only change that is coming is uh, coming here and it's coming here okay so that is the distance by which the origins have moved and this is the variable which is d3 so when it changes what changes the the z axis changes the distance in the z coordinate changes right when the link 3 is moving up and down then what changes is the uh, z coordinate changes and that is being shown here okay i multiply these two out now what do we get is uh, so i'm going to multiply t t0 to 2 into t2 to 3 so we can multiply this out just let's go back so it is this into this just multiply it out so what will happen the uh, because there's an entity matrix there okay because uh, 2 to 3 has an identity matrix in the rotation matrix so there is no change in the angle so there will be cos 1 2 minus sine 1 2 this will be sine 1 2 cos 1 2 and this is 0 0 l1 sine 1 plus l2 sine 1 2 l1 no sorry this is cos 1 2 the top is always cos 1 2 so this is uh, l1 sine 1 plus l2 sine 1 2 this is 0 0 1 this is d3 and this is 0 0 0 1 okay now let me write this is multiplied into the matrix uh, 3 to 4 okay so the last one i multiply what is 3 to 4 
I get c4 minus sine 4 minus sine 4 minus cos 4 0 0 minus 1 0 0 uh, 0 0 0 and here I get is 0 0 minus l4 and 1. How did I get that? I took the fourth I took the fourth row so I took the fourth row this one and I put it in the matrix. Now here please note that alpha there is a 180 which basically means the z-axis has changed. Okay, So the change of the z-axis is the one that is being shown here. So the change of the z-axis is coming here now. That's minus 1. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we have got. Now let me multiply this out and finally write down the matrix. So when I write the matrix, the full matrix. So this is my matrix 0 to 4. Which is equal to cos 1 to minus 4. This is equal to minus sine. Uh, 1 to minus 4 okay I hope you understand what I'm writing and how I'm writing it okay so this will become sine one two minus four and this will become cos one two four okay so what I'm getting is uh, this term here plus this is 0 0 minus 1 and this is uh, 0 0 this is 0 0 0 0 here I'm going to get L1 sine 1 plus L2 sorry L1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1 2 and here it is L1 sine 1 plus L2 sine 1 2 this is uh, this part is minus L4 plus D3 this is one okay so this is what we have got here now okay so this is my final matrix 0 to 4 now I'm going to equate this I'm going to equate this to what I'm going to equate this to T desired so I'm going to equate this to T desired okay so wherever I want the manipulator to go that's my desired position and orientation okay so if I say T desired is e is equal to I'm giving the numerical values so suppose I give numerical values 0 0.859 okay minus 0 0.51 and here we have minus 0 0.51 and we have minus 0 0.859 this is 0 0 0 sorry 0 0 1 0 0 minus 1 this is 0 0 0 uh, this is 0 0 and uh, at the end I get 1.36 1.3601 okay so I have taken if you're wondering why did I put those numbers this one is theta 1 this one is theta 2 right so when we did the two link manipulator or the three link manipulator for theta 1 theta 2 equal to 30 degrees okay I basically got 1.36 okay so I'm taking that value and putting it here it can be any number okay so we are putting x equal to this y is equal to that and I want to see I, I'll just want to connect all of them together it will become clear as we go along so I equate these two and I try and solve now now as we said that when we're trying to solve we, we target this one first we target this and that okay and then uh, we equate these two and then we try and solve so I take this and this equate them try and solve okay so now we start by solution from here Okay, so let me start the solution procedure from uh, that end. So 1.36, 1.36 is equal to L1 cos 1 cos 1 plus L2 cos 1 2 and 1.36 is equal to L1 sin 1 plus L2 sin 1 2. That, that was uh, here. So this I'm equating to 1.36 and equating this to 1.36. Okay. Now see that there are two unknowns, two unknowns, okay, theta 1, theta 2, okay, and uh, the structure of the equation is exactly same as the one in the two, three link manipulator, if you note. So if you look at these two equations and uh, if you look at the previous solutions that we were, we just solved in the two link manipulator, they are ex exactly the same. 
So in the three link manipulator, if you see, uh, the coordinate of this point was 1.36, 1.36, and the equations that you got is exactly the same. Okay, so the total matrix 0 to 3 was here. In the case of the SCARA, we have just added one more, T0 to 4 has been added. Okay, but if you look at this, this term and this term, the expression is exactly the same. So if you look here, it's exactly the same. So there are two unknowns and there's a sign and a cos. So how do we solve? We simply solve by, uh, as we just solved for the case of the three link manipulator, we find cos 2. Okay, cos 2 is equal to 1.36 squared plus 1.36 squared minus 1 squared minus 1 squared divided by twice 1 into 1. And we had just solved this problem some time back. So this comes out cos 2 uh, comes out to be. Uh, so what does cos 2 come out to be? 0 0.849. Okay. Now from cos 2 we find sine 2 which we got uh, 0 0.529. I use the same numbers so that I don't compute again. So you know where this came from. Okay. Then I do eight and two, so theta two is equal to eight and two uh, sine two cos two, so sine two cos two positive values. So I take zero point five two nine and zero point eight four nine and find that theta two is equal to thirty one degrees. Okay, so I've got uh, theta two equal to thirty one degrees. Now I need to get theta one. How do I get theta one? I find uh, tan alpha. 10 of 1.36 by 1.36 exactly the same solution as before which is equal to 1 and uh, what is tan beta tan beta was equal to uh, 0 0.274 so the solution is exactly the same okay so it is like this so the solution would be this is my alpha and uh, this is my beta okay this is my point xy and that is my point x y okay so what is theta 1 I have got theta 2 I just got theta 2 so what is theta 1 theta 1 is equal to tan inverse alpha minus beta which is equal to tan alpha minus tan beta divided by 1 plus tan alpha tan beta right uh, this is my l1 this is l1 that's l2 so exactly the same solution is there uh, because uh, okay so uh, when I do that, what do we get is theta 1. So tan alpha minus beta. How much is tan beta we got? Tan beta is equal to, so tan alpha, tan beta is equal to 0. Point. So tan of, uh, tan alpha, sorry. I have not written it correctly. So tan alpha is equal to 1.36 divided by 1.36. Please note, now make the correction. I did not write it correctly. And tan beta is equal to uh, 1 into sine 30 by 1 plus theta 2 was 31, right? 31 plus cos 31. Okay, so theta 2 was almost 31 degrees. Yeah. So how much is this equal to? This is equal to. Uh, sine 30 sine 31 so sine of 31 is equal to 0 0.51 and uh, how much is 1 plus cos 31 1 plus cos 31 is equal to 1.857 1.857 which is equal to 0 0.274 okay so I find what is tan alpha what is tan beta and then we do alpha minus beta so theta 1 is equal to alpha minus beta is equal to tan alpha minus tan beta which is equal to tan inverse or a tan 2 let's say a tan 2 a tan 2 of tan alpha minus tan beta divided by 1 plus tan beta tan alpha okay which comes out to be equal to 29.7 degrees okay so we have found theta 2 to be equal to 31 degrees, theta 1 to be equal to 29.7 degrees. Okay. Now I need to find what is, uh, so I found these two angles. Now I need to go back and what else is required? I need to find theta 4 now, theta 4 and D3. Okay, so I need to find D3 and theta 4. Now X, Y and Z, sorry, uh, slight correction there. 
So what am I what am I giving you? This is not zero. This cannot be zero. This has a value there. So this is equal to let's call this uh, two. Okay, sorry. Please note x, y, and z. This is a three. Is working in three D. So this has to be. This cannot be zero. Okay, or we can make it zero. No problem. Why change it? So let it be zero. Okay. So this is zero, but that is z. Okay. Now what is z? What? Uh, okay. Let's finish off with theta three. The theta 4 and then so I found theta 1 theta 2 I want theta 4 now how do we get theta 4 so you equate this to this okay so let's equate this term to the side left hand side and right hand side what do we get uh, we get left hand side to right hand side we get cos theta 1 plus theta 2 minus theta 4 is equal to how much was it so theta 1 plus theta 2 minus theta 4 is equal to 0 0.859. So it's equal to 0 0.859. So if I take cos inverse of this, I take cos inverse, then theta 1 plus theta 2 minus theta 4 is equal to the so cos inverse of uh, 0.859 is equal to 30.79. Okay. So I take 30.79 here. Now theta 1 plus, okay. So now I have found theta 1 plus theta, theta, theta 1 is 29.7 plus 31 is equal to uh, 30.79 plus theta 4. So what is theta 4 equal to? Theta 4 is equal to 30.79 minus 29.7 minus 31 okay so it is equal to 30.79 minus 29.7 minus sorry sorry i made a mistake 30.79 minus 29.7 minus 31 which is equal to minus 29.91 okay so in this case uh the value that I had put here, okay, corresponds. So cos inverse inverse cos of uh, 0.859 was equal to 30.79. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. There is a slight uh, error I made. Check this. So let me just uh, look at the. So here, what we have got is desired is 0.859. Okay, so this is equal to cos 1 2 minus 4 is equal to 0 0.859 and is theta 1 plus theta 2 minus theta 4 is equal to 0 0.859 point 0.8 so inverse inverse cos 0.859 is equal to 30.79 so it is minus theta 4 okay so let's have a look here so it's a minus theta 4 sorry it's a minus theta 4 so this is a minus minus theta 4 so minus theta 4 is equal to 30.79 minus 29.7 minus 31 which is equal to minus so theta 4 is equal to 29.91 okay Okay, so uh, we have found theta 1, theta 2 and theta 4 now. Okay. Okay, so now if we uh, go back again. And uh, so now if we go back, okay, let's, uh, this is what we get. Now, what about D3? So we have got theta 1, theta 2 and theta 4. Now, what about D, what happened to uh, D3? So we have four variables where is d4 now so here this one is my d3 is the variable right so which is the variable d3 so d3 is the variable so i'm going to equate this to so where, where this is equal to zero now okay so what i get is uh, the equation here is minus l4 minus l4 plus d3 is equal to zero so here I've taken it to be zero, I did not change it. So, so I equate this 
to be equal to zero. Okay. So I equate uh, the term L4 minus L4 plus D3 is equal to zero. And we have assumed L1 is equal to L2 is equal to L4. It's an assumption I'm making. Okay, so the link lengths are already known from before. So D3 is equal to L4, which is equal to 1. So I have solved for theta 1, theta 2, theta 4, and D3. Okay, so this basically shows how we can solve for theta 1, theta 2, and theta 4, and uh, D3. Now the question that uh, why did I take these numbers? What am I trying to explain here? So what I tried to explain is that both the problems are related. Okay, if you look at this from the top, what do you see? This is a two-link manipulator. This is one joint. This is another joint, and this is the third. Okay, so if I see the top view, this is what I'll see. This is L1. That is L2, and the z-axis moves up and down. So z-axis moves along that direction. So this is a point, right? When you're seeing in this direction. So here it is moving perpendicular to the plane. This axis is Z4 and Z3, which is coming out of the plane. So Z3 and Z4 and Z3 are coming out of plane. So which means that this is a point. So this is behaving like a two-link manipulator. Okay. So whatever equations we had written for the three degree of freedom robot, which is this one. Okay. So whatever I have written here, whatever equations I wrote for the two degree of freedom, three degree of freedom manipulator here. Okay. So this can be looked upon as a manipulator like this, like this. Okay. So this is my theta one, that's my theta two. For the scala, this Z3 and Z4 is coming out of plane there. So it is behaving like a two degree freedom manipulator only. And that's why the equations were exactly same. And that is why when I took these numbers and I, and I fed them back, the solutions I got are exactly here only. The same as theta one, theta two here. Okay. I hope you can understand the correlation I'm trying to make between the Two degree of freedom, three degree of freedom robot, and the scala. So this is the scala robot looks exactly same as this. The only thing that Z4 and Z3 and Z4 are coming out of the plane there. So when it is moving, this will move in a circle like this. It can be anywhere in there. It the x and y coordinate is not affected by changes in Z3. So D3 has nothing to do with x and y because it is just moving in and out of the plane. So the solution for theta one theta two is exactly the same as that of a two link manipulator. So this is something I wanted to explain. I hope it is clear why I took these numbers. I first did forward kinematics of the three degree of freedom, then forward kinematic as inverse kinematics of the three degree of freedom. Okay, and I use these numbers, the same numbers, just to explain that in the case of the SCARA also, it behaves like a two link manipulator only. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here, let me just uh, draw it here and explain. So this is one link. This is another link. This is here, and that is my indefector. So when I'm looking at the top view of this manipulator, this is one link which is corresponding to here. This is the other one which is corresponding there. Okay, this is the first joint. Okay, so this is my L1, L1. This is the second joint, which is here. So this is my L2. Okay, and the Z3 is that side, and Z4 is this side, and D3 is here. It can just move up and down. Now this is my x, y coordinate here of that point. Okay, The coordinates of this point x, y and z, z contributes to z, d3 motion. x and y is contributing only by theta 1 and theta 2. So when the two links move, it comes like this for example. Okay, This is my theta 1, that's my theta 2. z is there. So this x, y is not coupled with uh, z. Okay, and hence it behaves like a two link manipulator which is like this. This is exactly that. This is my x, y. Okay, so when I use even here, even if I add one more link, this point x, y depends only on theta one and theta two. It does not depend on the on the third fellow. Okay, because this is my origin of frame three, and the z axis is orthogonal to this. So the z axis here is here, so it is moving orthogonal to the plane here. So if there is any change in d three, it will not affect x and y, and hence the solution has exactly the same structure as this. Okay, and if you look at the uh, the final matrix T0 to 4, so this is my T0 to 4, this term which comes here, this term which is coming here, that is equivalent to my z-axis, and there is no sign and cos there, 
because if there is a change in d3 l4 is a length right it's fixed so when there is a change in d3 what happens only z changes and there is no sine cos there okay so i use the same numbers to make the correlation between this uh, three problems that we solved today okay i hope you understand uh, and it's clear what i've been trying to explain in terms of forward kinematics uh, inverse kinematics uh, the correlation between this car robot and a uh, Two degree of freedom uh, or three degree of freedom planar manipulator because the x y and the z are decoupled okay the x y moves in one plane the theta one theta two changes x y changes whereas the z axis changes only the d3 changes okay and so basically the solutions have almost the same structure i hope you understood the correlation that i've been trying to explain so we'll stop here today and continue in the next class where we'll talk about velocity kinematics and then we'll move on to jacobians thank you